let's not forget, FM are also the team who have knocked out the number one seeds of Kick Esports. They've beat them, they've played them twice throughout this tournament, late last night, which myself and Hoss casted. Yeah, and that two was best a, Yeah, a 2-0 victory there. And then they played them in the consolidation final earlier on this afternoon. And that was a 2-0 victory as well. So FM Esports knocking out the number one seeds. Existence knocking out the number three seeds, I believe it was, in Team Infuse. So it's seed number two against seed number four. And we're almost ready to go on Inferno. All ten players in the server. Knife round one by FM Esports and kind of, I'm ready. Are you ready, good sir, for the grand final of the G2A.com Counter Strike Challenge? Chewy, I was born ready. I'm sure you were, good friend. Here we go. D Inferno, slightly CT sided map. Realistically, you expect the CT to accumulate around 10 to 11 rounds. So uh, here we go. Pistol round coming out. And obviously, because when you're on the T side, you're only really expected to get four or five rounds. If you manage to win the pistol and then um, take advantage of uh, the next yeah. two rounds where you have the weapon advantage, then you can easily find yourself at three rounds. Look at this stat coming in from FM Esports to start things off here. They've only got one single player on A, gambling a lot of their attention over towards the B-bomb site here to start things off. We are live straight away, not wasting any time. You can see on the map there all those four players. Only Socken, otherwise known as Falkies in the game here in pit. That usual position that we've been seeing him play all weekend, he has been doing a good, good job of it, but this is a big risk here from FM. Well, it seems like FM have watched some Existence demos, they've done some of their homework, and they seem convinced that Existence are going to perhaps try and split this B-bomb site. We saw Neil Zeno looking towards CT spawn, expecting a few Spaniards making their way through Arch, and there's the opener from Weber, looking to make it a double, he will make it a double! And well, the crowd certainly enjoyed that one. It's great to have an awesome crowd here at the eSports stage at the Coventry Rico Arena. Weber gets his third. That's the hat trick. Will he get the fourth? Mason is going to try and respond. <laughs> is the Tech Knight going to take him out? It will. So no more for Weber, unfortunately. But now left in a four versus two. Hey, FM, they've still got a two-man advantage here. We've got Sokun, who's quick to pounce on the rotation. And you know what? Existence also rotating and they're going to run straight into Sokken. The problem here is they've got that Tech 9. If they drop Sokken, they might be able to go for a quick plant, but they're in fact heading towards Arch and they've got Neil Zeno making his way in from Library. He gets nailed in the head and now Sokken holds off flipping. He's still got Mason to deal with. Mason is now dead. 1-0 FM. 1-0 FM and the crowd cheers. Nice pistol round coming in from the British squad. And I mean, you mentioned it earlier on, so did our lovely host, saying that FM haven't lost on this stage, and it's going to be really interesting to see how that plays in their favour as time goes on, whether the fact that they've played on this stage before, they're ready to go, they know what it's like on this stage, is going to be an interesting thing as we get into the game. But as expected here, Karnak, we see this time and time again now, that Tech 9 pistol and armour buy in the second round for the Tees. Well, the Tech 9, even after they nerfed it recently, it's still so goddamn powerful. I mean, you said it earlier, you can argue whether it's actually a, a disadvantage to the terrorist at times yeah, because of yeah, how good true. of a weapon it is, especially for the price and the fact that it's just a pistol. Yeah. So, uh, standard stuff here from Existence. They brought up Armour Varkeri, who uh, is most likely going to be that player who's conserving a bit of cash because they perhaps want to uh, pick up an AWP ASAP. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing how that AWP plays a role in this AWP match. It wasn't too common earlier on when watching the Kick versus FM game. FM really not deciding to use it too much on their T side, but out come the flashes and out come the grenades as existence make their entrance onto the B bomb site. Yeah, towards the B bomb site, the Spanish train goes. Sokken sprays and prays through the smoke. There's the double. Good stuff. But Musan Bani will still get the bomb down. They've still got the Tech 9s. You can't rule them out, especially up close and personal like that. Weber, such a key player for FM Esports going down. But hey, FM, they've still got the rifles, or have they? Musan Bani pushes with the Tech Ooh. 9, and the Tech 9 by itself, you can practically argue, is like a rifle. It's all pressure on Mike S now. He's got to try and save the day. They're twisting and turning. Existence here, just running down the clock. Run down the clock, they will not. But Mike S, does he have a kit? He does not. He's got to run away, and it is going to be an Existence round. Unfortunate there for Mike S and the FME Sports squad, but Existence instantly even up the situation here. And that was a shame, it was just really the Tech 9 coming in too strong. And that's the thing with this gun, although it has been nerfed, although it has, you know, its, it's um, long range drop off has been taken further back now, so it's more of a short range weapon, it's still just as powerful at close range. And we saw it moving around there when Weber got taken out. It was just a one tap straight to the head. Nothing FM could have done about it. But when you've got those rifles, you cannot allow a player like Musambani off his leash to get three kills with just the Tech 9 like yeah. that. And now FM. 
Let's see whether it's going to be around that they live to regret because now momentum shifts in favor of, of, of existence. But into round number three we go. Pistols on both teams here as Carey is still deciding to stay with that Tech 9. And FM are forcing this up. I really don't blame them in this situation here, Kai Knight. They're not going to be happy that they lost that Antico in round number two. So Mike S was able to save that M4. Not only that, he's also got that armor as well and also the diffuse kit, which could come into play if he's able to hold on for it for a while. But still with just under a minute left on the clock, not too much going on. Just trying to find out some information, our team existence. Yeah, it's an interesting setup coming in. Both Socket and Neil Zeno holding Arch. Neil Zeno obviously there with the flash. What will most likely happen? Neil Zeno throw the flash down. Socket will take the first hit and he will get a hit onto the head of Kyrie. There's the pop flash from Neil Zeno and into his CZ they run, gets one. But it's not going to be, be enough as the Spaniards still try to make their way around Arch here. Weather quick on the rotation. Let's see whether Existence wrap around the bomb site or head through CT spawn. This they still have yeah. CTs waiting for I mean, for this them. is the thing. Because Socken has backed away from Arch, that allows the T's the advantage now to choose whether they want to wrap round A, as you mentioned, or go through CT spawn. But Lau is going to take down Socken, so we're now left on a three versus three. Mike S responds, and it looks very crucial that he was save, able to save onto that M4 in the last round as it's a one versus three. Musambani with six seconds left on the clock. We'll plant the bomb, but Weber finishes him off. And FME Sports on the force by win the third round. That was actually really well played from Musambani considering the situation he found himself in. Three versus one. He's planted the bomb, he's lost the round, but that now guarantees an extra $800 on top of the cash that existence would normally get for playing and losing that round come this next round. So look, they're forced by it again. It's worked for them once and they're going for it again. This is what we see more and more often now. When it's back and forth like this, when you see a team win a pistol you want round. You pressure on your opponent. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to give up. It's almost, you know, a war of a mental game of who's going to give up first and go for that full eco. Who's going to try and bring some of that pressure off. But I'm liking it here. This is what we want in a grand final. We want constant pressures. Oh, that smoke grenade didn't exactly go to its intended area, but still, existence trying to see what damage they can do with these rec nines where they will start things off. Yeah, very pa passive setup coming here from the B bomb site from FM Esports. Mazen comes in and that is the B bomb site open now for Flippin and Koba. He's playing here on the flank. Bulk is, or Socken rather, knows where he is. He's of course the Danish member of this FM side, but the bomb's down on B Chewy. The, 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 the CTs still have to wait for the reinforcements to rotate in from Banana. And of course, the Ts in this case, they've got time on their hands and they've got the positional advantage to play with. And they've got grenades to work with as well here as we see a Molotov going down just to try and delay that push from FME Sports. Even more so. Musambani now just over in new box is going to get spotted. Will he get taken down? I'm not too sure, but Karnak, the clock is ticking. Down goes Neil Zinio. Mason isn't going to be seen over there, so he gets another kill with the Galil. It's a one versus one, but there is no time left. And existence responds straight back. Kainite, we are all even two to two. And that's a shame for FM. It looked like they had a good setup on that B bomb site. And I've been casting them today, and they've been looking strong over towards B. So for the second time in a row, well, second time in relative quick succession, we see existence with those Tech Nines come in and reign supreme on that B bomb site. Well, that round there was a great example of how, even though you're a man down, how much more the game turns in your favor. When you've got the bomb down as a terrorist, you can get those great after plant positions. You just hold the angles which you know the CTs are going to come from. Yeah. You know that they're going to have ants in their pants, so that they, they're, they're going to be hungry to try and move ASAP and defuse the bomb. And essentially, FM Esports just ran into the crosshair of Musambani and Co. And here we go, it's tied at 2 2. And at the moment, the T's. It's a cheaper side for them. They've got more firepower. But again, FME Sports is a CT-sided map. So let's see whether they can make that work in their favor and whether we're going to see yet another round go back and forth between these two. It's been a great game so far. Smoke grenades will rain down on that smaller B-bomb site as out go the Spaniards of Team Existence, making their presence known. They are not wasting any time here. The clock is ticking, and they need to find these counter-terrorists and put them to sleep very quickly. The flash grenades are coming in, and the rotation's coming in as well. Cryptics will get dropped, but Weber, he's been playing this position so well so far this tournament. He's not going to be able to do much more damage here, though, as he's taken down. <laughs> My guess with York will respond, and we're left in a three versus two. Yeah, here yeah, Existence really struggling because the bomb was dropped. Flipping, however, with the Galil to add insult to injury to FM Esports. But hey, they've still got to try and pick up this bomb. The question at hand is, is Socken aware of what's going on? He's only got a scout. He's got no armor. Neil Zeno, he's not even got a rifle. Mazen with the headshot. It's all down to the Scotsman. He will get Mazen in the face, but Existence still live to fight another day. 
but hey, that was a force buy from FM Esports. They didn't win the round, but they still dealt a heck of a load of damage onto this existence side. You don't want to allow the T's to build up bank. No, I think if Mykes and Weber had been able to do more damage with the rifles that they had, because we saw Weber had that M4 right in the back of the site, and we also saw Weber, I'm um, sorry, Mykes even using the orb. And I think if they had been able to utilize them a bit more, like we've been seeing them do time and time again earlier on in this tournament, they could have started a good chance of holding that beam bomb site. Wasn't the case, but have a look at this aggressive push here coming in from the CTs. They've only got pistols in hand, so they're changing up the tempo. Yeah, for my liking, FM Esports, they've, they've shown too much respect for existence, particularly in and around the banana Ooh, area. Hello, hello Sokken from underneath. He That's will say hurt. thank you very much for this Galil, but Mason, he spotted him. He's going to be calling that out to the rest of his teammates. Flipping with the headshot, but they are still a man down here. Chewie, make that two men down. And he's got the bomb. Yep, yes, he does. And now existence, they're in a tough situation. But again, they still have the firepower and the armor to get themselves out of it. But not if Weber has his say. Great stuff from FM. This is just back and forth gameplay, exactly what we would have wanted in the grand final of the I-54 G2A.com Counter-Strike Challenge. Mason now making his way down second mid. Will smoke off the bomb as he tries to pick him up, pick it up even just to get some cover. But he knows that there are angry CTs all around him. And I mean, kind of, this game is just back and forward. It almost seems like teams are standing more chance of winning a darn round with pistols in their hand than they are anything else. Mason will get the kill, but he's tagged down to 15. And with only 28 seconds left on the clock, we can still hit, see Cryptics here just holding Banana. Yeah, 22 approaching the 22nd mark. And to no surprise, Mason is going to be heading towards the B-bomb site. Three opponents. Chances are there's going to be two players on the larger bomb site and one player on the smaller bomb site. Cryptics. He knows there's barely any, any time on the clock. He knows that Mason really there had to try and plant the bomb. And of course, he's not going to be able to. The change of tempo works for FME Sports with only pistols and hardly anything else. I don't think they had armor or grenades really to work with there too much anyway. And it worked for them. They changed the pace. They caught existence off guard. And they've punished existence now as they will be on an eco themselves. It's going to be 1P250 and 1 Tech 9, but absolutely nothing else here. So finally existence of given up on the mental game that it's been between these two squads in the past six rounds of just trying to force the other team down onto an eco. It's been back and forth the entire game so far. Yeah, FM need to show no respect here towards existence, particularly on the banana area. I'd like to see them smoke the bottom of it from CT spawn, push down. Do not allow existence to push up to the top of banana because once they're there and you allow them to throw their smokes over to coils and CT spawn, they will launch a B attack, which we've done. The, we've seen them do time and yeah. time again. Their A attack hasn't been too great so far. So let's see what they can pull out the bag here. They've only got pistols. Well, have a look at this. We've got one player who's in CT spawn at the second, leaving Arch wide open. Neil Zinio will be covering it, but he's covering it from a distance. He's the man on your screen now, and he's going to be backing his way through towards library. Flash goes out, but they've already made their way through CT spawn, and he's not aware of this. He's going to catch it late. So they've got full control of the CT spawn area. Neil Zinio, with a bit of unlucky timing there, he will get found by one player and unfortunately GoTV takes us to the complete wrong bomb site but Falkies or Sokka is better known will find them starting to wrap back round now and in all honesty kind of, I really would have liked to have seen Existence just completely push around CT spawn and seeing if they could get aggressive in that construction area and make their way onto the B bomb site. Yeah I agree but I think they knew that because they pushed through Arch and they faced no resistance they knew that there must have been someone hiding in library, and that player was Neil Zeno, and yeah. they spotted him eventually. Or that he could have been right on that B-bomb site, and they will have stacked three on B if there's nobody covering Arch whatsoever. Because I've seen FM do that. I've seen FM just playing two people in pit quad area earlier on in this tournament, and it has worked for them. I know it leaves Arch completely neglected, but somehow it worked for them a few times earlier on. I'm not too sure how successful it will be here, and they are evidently aware of that. But we're into round number eight. FM Esports just about clinching the lead in this game so far. Sambani with them hot flash and going towards Arch, but that ain't gonna stop my guest Neil Zinho and co. Three Spaniards hit the floor. Now it's all down to Musambani and Flippin to try and save the day. Musambani is now a dead man. And let's see what Flippin can do. Last one left alive versus four. And what he's gonna do is absolutely diddly squat. The answer to your question there, Kai Knight. There's FME Sports advance their round win. To two now, five to three is a the score. Their money is sitting pretty whilst on the Spanish side. It's not pretty whatsoever. About $2,000 average between all of them. And they're going to be able to get some P250s in hand. Not Tech Nines, no armor buys, no grenades, just a couple of P250s. And Kainite, really, according to the script, this should be 6 3 to FM. 
Yeah, and it's so important as well that FM Toxic have built up so much bank. I mean, they've got a player in Cryptics on over 9k cash, so that's a great start for them. But Weber comes in, granted up against the Eco, but moment existence down. And let's see whether FM Esports can see out this round, because Musambani here is in great position to potentially flank, but that M4 of Sokken is just far too good. Sokken has 15 frags already. We've only played nine rounds, and Sokken is 15 to five. Mm. Rolling in the money as well as we see three FM players in five digits. Uh, we see Existence now buying what they can. They all have head armor. They've all got AK-47s and they have got enough grenades here, Karnak. But unless they plant... I don't think they've planted the bomb in quite a while now. So unless they plant the bomb here, their economy, once again, could be in a dire situation. Yeah, but it's so important, again, like I was saying, that FM has built up so much bank because on the CT side, what can happen is because it's so much expensive, you can more than often, despite winning a good three or four rounds in a row, lose one on the trot, lose two on the trot, and before you know it, you're broke. Yeah. So it's really good that FM Esports here have a bit of leeway to work with, because Existence, I know that it looks like FM Esports are in the lead here, but Existence, technically, they're only two rounds away from hitting that magical number five round. Yeah, exactly the really point. For yeah. the side I was going enough. to make that exact point. We are only in round number 10, and Existence have already got three on the board. If they can get five or six rounds here, on the T side of Inferno, they will be more than happy with that situation as the thing, as the uh, game will switch over and the teams will swap in only a few rounds time. But 50 seconds left in this round number 10, no casualties as of yet. Both teams taking it slow, FME Sports holding strong with that two on B, three on A setup, the standard here on the CT side of Inferno. Cryptics will take down Kerry though, and that's the initial frag. It is the initial frag, and not only has Cryptics got the frag, but he's gotten the information as well. They're preparing for what could potentially be a B push here. They put the smoke down to stop them. It's something that Existence did very well this morning. Yeah. They were very, very good at playing down the clock. And with only 20 seconds to go, FM here, they're putting the mollies out in Existence. No, they have to rush through them because they need to try to get this bomb down. But Cryptics, he's got a hat trick so far. He's going to be hungry to make it four. And let's see if he can find Musambani. One thing that I have to say is quite ironic right now is the fact that, I've, uh, as I mentioned before, I've been casting FM Esports quite a lot this tournament. And especially on Dust2, <laughs> Neil Zeno shoots the chicken. Um, they, they've, been, they've been taking it so slow on their T side. And that's exactly what Existence did. So the problem for FM on their T side on Dust2, which we saw a little earlier on, which actually isn't going to be played in this series, was that they took it so slow and kick their opponents earlier on, had grenades to use right up to the last second that they weren't able to push through. And we've seen that exact situation, but now in terms of FM Esports, having those Molotovs to use still with only 20 seconds left on the clock. So Existence have got to try and push through something because the, you know, the clock is running down and they can't do it. Four Galils, and that says a lot really. Not emphasizes, no, it emphasizes that Existence are low on cash. They could have potentially gone for AK-47s, but of course they value the helmets and they value the usage of grenades a lot more, particularly smokes. And when you see a lot of smokes, most of the time it suggests that you're planning on heading towards that B bomb site. Smoke off CT spawn, smoke off calls. But look at this, Sock and going aggressive. Again, this is the, the no respect style of play. I said FM need to put down on this game up against Existence. They can't allow Existence to get comfortable, particularly with FM on home soil. And I think FM are aware that this could potentially be a B push because have a look at the rotation. We've got Mike S who's made his way over from the A bomb site all the way through into Ruins at the second. Only two on A, but still, these two players that are on A, you would bank on them doing some great damage. They've been holding it down well so far. And I'm trying to think of the last time that we saw Existence get a bomb plant. It's been quite a while. So the defense so far from FM Esports has been very strong indeed. They looked good on Inferno earlier. They took 11 rounds on their CT side of this against the number one seeds. And because FM went aggressive in second mid and they've gone aggressive in apps as well, they know that Existence must be at Banana, which is why they've rotated the extra man towards B. Yeah. And now Existence, 15 seconds to go. They're not going to run into just two CTs, but three CTs. And that's a wonderful shot from Weber. Scream-esque headshot coming out. And I'll tell you what, the Spaniards, they're not going to get the bomb down this round either. They're falling like yeah. flies no time. and they can't even find Lowell. Well, Lowell was on the flank trying to go around through our arch area and then CT spawn to try and do some damage. But by the time he got in a great position to do some damage to FME Sports, the rest of his squad had disappeared off the map and he was the last one after life. He will be able to salvage that Galil and save it, but the rest of his squad forced down to pistols. Carry with a Deagle, actually. We don't see that all too often. A couple of Tech Nines and a P250, but I said about how FME Sports against Kick earlier on today took 11 rounds on their CT side. They look very strong. Let's see what damage they can do. Mike S has been on form with this orb, and once again, showing what damage he can do with it. He gets the entry frag in round number 12. 
Yeah, Gary gonna be the lurker. But Neil Zidio says, he puts his foot down in Apps and says, you know what, guys? Apps is mine. They're not gonna get control of it and rush into the B bomb site. And here, just FM Esports doing what FM Esports do best. Just mowing down any coat. And it is gonna be 9 3 in favor of the Brits. I really don't like calling out players for having a bad performance. It's not what I like to do as a caster. I don't think any caster likes to do that. But I'm just going to point out the two players on the existence side who are at the bottom of the scoreboard there for everybody Lowell and Kyrie. who is watching. Yeah, Lowell and Kyrie. Not exactly what they would have wanted here. And they need to pick their game up now because the momentum is firmly running in favor of FM. And I'm just trying to count up how many rounds they've had in a row. I believe it's seven they've knocked up in a row here. Oh, well, my case. <laughs> Well, my guess here taking no respect to a completely new level, which is great to see that the Brits have a heck of a load of confidence flowing through their veins. But Mason, he wants to get revenge and lands the headshot onto my guess. Question at hand is, are they going to salvage his AWP or stick around with this more versatile AK setup? Well, the, the person who would be initially, in my opinion, the guy to pick up that AWP, especially when they had double up set up yesterday, would be Weber. But he's all the way on this B-bomb site, so he initially won't be picking it up. I'm not too sure if any of the other FME Sports players would be confident picking it up themselves, but still, the bomb is over towards alt mid apps areas. We've got one player in Mason who's pushed right through over towards balcony. Musan Bani now making his way to second mid as it looks like things are going to switch up. We've got two players from FM on B, two on A, and with 40 seconds left on the clock, it looks like this is going to be an A take. And I've seen Neil Zinho hold this position all day, and he's looked very strong on it. And this is why four versus four actually favors the T's a lot more. The CTs yeah. cover less ground. That A bomb site is so large that it will be four versus two on this rush. And out of apps they come. Socket with one, looking to make it a double. Yes, he will make it a double. 20 seconds on the clock. The bomb has been lost here, Chewy. And surely here, existence can't pick the bomb up. They need to try and, and take out all these last remaining CTs. Neil Zinio takes down one as now Musambani will be the last one left alive. With only eight seconds left on the clock, cryptics through Arch will confirm double figures for FME Sports round number 10 and the economy for uh, existence is okay, but it's not great. Not what they would have wanted in round number 14. They're going to force this up, but Kyanite, they really need to look now at trying to get this to 10-5 because if it gets to 11-4, FME Sports are just going to have so much momentum. That being said, FME Sports against Kick, I know I keep mentioning it, but they finished the half 11-14, uh, 11-4, sorry. They were 14-7 up against Kick, and we went to overtime. Not only that, we went to double overtime on Inferno earlier on, so don't think it's over just yet, ladies and gentlemen. So, can Existence get 10-5? Sokken, does he have other ideas? Well, he did, but he wasn't able to execute them. We've got four out of five Existence players in apps. Mike, Ooh. hungry to return the frag, and return the frag he will. And here we go, Neil Zeno is just waiting there with the Molotov. If he sees any T's pushing through, he'll try to barbecue them and, of course, slow them down and run the clock down. And that's how simple the CT side is. But it's a lot easier said than done. A course. lot easier said than done, of course, and us as casters can make it sound pretty simple, but maybe not the case. And have a look at this. Cryptics has got a lot of work to do. He's going to smoke that area off just to try and prevent existence pushing through there, but they are slowly but surely creeping their way through. Weber's trying to hold Arch, but he needs to rotate back over to B because that's where the push is coming in. Cryptics is going to be calling down the radio for help as he spots the bomb. Lowell does get dropped, and now Weber through CT spawn is going to try and help them out. He picks up one kill. Mason and Flippin trying to do some work themselves, but kind of the clock is ticking. Weber will fall before Mike S with the AWP response. And now Mason is going to be the last one left alive here. Unfortunately, we can't see what he's doing in a second. We've got a slight glitch. There we go. We're back on board with the game. But Kainai, even though Cryptics was the only player on that D bomb site, a very quick rotation came in. Existence were too slow. And look at the clock. Well, Existence were too slow. And pushing in, they pushed in one by one. And now Mason's just going to try and get as many exits as possible. But again, yet another round, Chewy, where Existence have failed to plant the bomb. Yeah. And look at their economy. I mean, it's. I mean, again, it's okay, but okay isn't good enough. And as you can see on the screen, last round of the first half, we are into round number 15. And is this going to be an 11 4 half? or a 12-3 half in favor of the Brits. The number four seeds coming in strong. They've not lost a map on this eSports stage here at the Rico Arena yet. Are they going to continue on that fashion, or will we see the number two seeds, the team of existence who have not lost a map yet, bring this back into their favor. Socken pushing aggressively, and it's paid off. It has, but Mason may return it. He's been deep down to nine points of health, but he's still alive, but they've still got a very angry Weber to deal with. Weber do, doing what Weber does best. Three huge frags on this B-bomb site. 
And now Musambani with an AK-47, a bomb to plant, and a dream that won't come true. 12-3 at the half. What a half from FM Esports. The crowd applauses, and rightly so, as the home squad of FM come in with a nine-round lead. Absolutely phenomenal work from them. And it's a shame because I've not actually casted Existence yet. You have this morning. They were evidently looking stronger than they have been now on this. What do you think is going wrong for them, Karnak? Well, it looks like FM Esports are basically, you know, after losing on Inferno against Existence, they've almost taken a step back, reviewed the demo, analyzed where they think they went wrong, and gone from there. So, uh, here we go. Let's see who's going to win this uh, pistol round. Obviously, if you win the pistol round, and you capitalize on the next round, you're expected to win three in a row. Yeah. Should FM Esports do that? Then yeah. the one doesn't match point. Well, this already. is the thing: expect to win the consecutive two rounds after that. We certainly didn't we see that earlier on. Half. Yes, it was just back and forward eco wins, pretty much. And I keep seeing that at this event on Inferno. It's quite interesting, but I don't think we can really underestimate how important it is here for Team Existence to win their CT pistol, because otherwise they're going to be in trouble. They already are in trouble, and Carey's in trouble, not down to 14 points of health. So to be or not to be. It's currently the FM Esports question. And by the looks of things, they are going to be heading towards B rather than towards the A-bomb site. It's a no-brainer really at times because your pistols are better up close and personal. And most of the time, there is one less CT on this smaller bomb site. Cryptix leads the charge. He will get an entry frag. Musambani now he has got to fall back into ruins and wait for reinforcements here. But no, he's going to go aggressive and he will kill Cryptix. Well, the bomb's been planted and Mason on the flank will take down Weber here. This is looking dangerous. He's been able to pick up that 5-7 by the looks of things. And Neil Dino's going to challenge him, just trying to waste time. But the bomb has been planted. Musambani moving around oh, we'll find my guess and this is all going wrong here for fm esports can sock and save the day five points of health he has armor but that grenade is going to come in he will drop and it should be a defuse but i don't think they've got time or do they is there one player on yeah, top plenty of, yeah plenty, plenty of time indeed i didn't see i saw one player backing off and for a second i thought oh gosh has that retake gone wrong but yeah plenty of time indeed and it was close kyanite but existence pick up a very important pistol don't worry the break oh. nines are going to come out from FM. Oh dear. Or are they? Or are they? We see oh, one, we two. Only two. Okay, so it looks like instead of going out well, with it's the pet nine armor, they're going to save. It's because they planted the bomb in that first round. Yeah, of course. So they'll go. Yeah. So they're looking for that third round early buy. Exactly. Simple stuff. Chewy, PhD in Counter Strike Global Offensive. Thank you very much. If only that was such a thing. Maybe well, one four. day. Anyway, round number 17 it is. We've got a Pro 19 in the hands of Musambani, an MP9 on Carey. And it's, it's almost as if with this buy, they're kind of expecting FM Esports not to bother for that full Tech 9 buy. It's almost as if Existence have probably had that communication saying, okay, they bought, they, um, they planted the ball. Well, the thing is, there isn't that much pressure on FM Esports to quickly yeah, return exactly, the round because exactly. of the huge difference in round. There's eight yeah. rounds between the teams. So uh, here we go. Kyrie with that new buff. Oh, 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 MP9. And it will drop to Mazen as well, getting on the score sheet. Cryptics has other ideas, but it was a bit of a tough ask. And of course, because he's using that MP9, he gets more money from it. SMG is yeah. giving you more money, apart from the P90, I do believe. But he gets more money from that just to help the economy of the CTs out that little bit more as team existence. Now make it five rounds on the board here, and this is what we suspected. This is exactly why FM Esports didn't decide to go for that Tech 9 armor buy in round number 17. It's because they were saving up to try and see what they could do here with the AK-47s and one Tech 9 in the hands of Sokka. And so into round number 18 we go here, and going up against a couple of Famuses and a P90, these AK-47s should reign supreme. Should. And let's see what happens. The AK, of course, is a one-shot headshot weapon as opposed to the FAMAS. It's a lot more powerful as well. So here we go, Neil Zinho just watching the flank from Quad. And how are FM going to try and split here? It's very, very passive from existence, but that may could deal a heck of a load of damage onto the Scotsman and deals damage onto Cryptics as well. FM Esports have had really good takes on Quad so far today, so it's really not surprising me that they've smoked off Arch and they're making a lot of their presence known over towards Quad and that Weber is the player down banana. This is standard from FM Esports on the T side of Inferno from this tournament, especially that incendiary grenade will go down just to try and present any pushes, but they're actually going to make their way out of Arch now, but they're stopped again from that incendiary grenade. And we can have a look at that one player who's been able to get himself through to CT spawn. 
is going to potentially be able to do a lot of damage because we see now FM backing away, making their way down towards Banana. And if that one T player left alone in CT spawn goes through, it's going to be Sokka. And there we go. And he's going to be able to pick up a rifle on top of that, can't I? The main issue here, though, Musambani put his Molotov down onto Banana. And Lippin also has just put his down. But look, hello, Mason is going to flank them from behind. He's going to try and burn them to death as well. And with 10 seconds to go, Mike Essenko need to get a move on. They need to hurry up and try to plant this bomb. Five seconds and counting. Flippin's hiding at the back of the bomb site, and the bomb will not go down. And Sokun is just going to try and get out there and save that weapon. Great hold from existence. This is the danger. And the Molotovs were so significant yeah. there at the top of Banana. Again, this is the danger for FM. This was the danger on Dust 2 against Kick. We saw it on both both of the times they played uh, kick on Dust2 in this tournament, and it seems like it could come into fruition here on Inferno. FM take their T rounds so slow, and when they get the entry frags and they can plant the bomb, you know, in the snap time with only 10 seconds left, it works. But it's only worked a certain amount of times. It's not worked all too often for them, in all honesty, and it didn't work there. They were too slow. The existence had the grenade still in the bank at the end of the round to throw down and to stop the pushes. We saw Mason on that incredible flank through mid down Banana, and existence pick up another round. The reason they fell back to Banana is because they tried out A and realized how passive their opponents were yeah. playing. But what actually happened was their opponents were playing incredibly passive, but their opponents, at least on A, had I used mean, up all the Molotovs. Yeah, this is the thing, because they, we saw Kick playing really passive, two players in pit earlier on, on quad side of A bomb site. And FME Sports still pushed it. They still went in, and they got the kills a lot of the time. Here, for some reason, they decided to back away and go over towards B. I'm not too sure why, but it didn't work for them. It's understandable why the main issue again for them there was that existence, the B players for existence were still left with those Molotovs yeah. and so forth, yeah. so it helped them slow it down. Um, because a lot of the time when you try to push the A bomb site, you try to see if you can find an entry frag, because you know you have to deal with the CTs, but yeah. talking about entry frags here, there so far aren't going to be any, or is there? Mason with three, and Kyrie to get the final kill on this uh, relatively simple anti-eco for existence, but as far as FM Esports are concerned, they yet to rack up a T round, so they really need to try and get their first one on the board ASAP. Well, existence lost every single round after round number five on the first half. Now they've won four in a row here on their CT half. It's 12 to 7, and they've just got to take things one round at a time. We do see FME Sports with the buy here. They've got five AK 47s, so they can do some damage, of course, with these. Time and time again, we know what FME Sports can do on their T side, but existence, you know, they're not out of this game yet. And this is what I said despite it being a 12 3 half, do not count the Spaniards out at any cost. Lowell playing just behind that truck, the forest spot, as I like to call it, where we saw him play quite a lot at Cologne. Weber, as usual, he's sort of the lone ranger in this FM side. They let him push another side of the map by himself to catch off rotators, but the flash is coming in. Kyrie to try and take on the incoming Brits, but he's not going to get a frag just yet. Now he will. Kyrie with the AK kill. On to Sokken. Sokken has been such a great player for FM Esports, and now he's down for the count. We've got to wait and see who'll, who's going to get the entries for FM here. Switch. Over to Neil Zinio, trying to find that player at quad. Mason down to seven single points of health. But there's also a player. What's great is that that player who's playing Arch right near the back of the A site, he's also got a player supporting him over towards the CT spawn area, just making sure that FME Sports can't make their way aggressively through, potentially push through Arch towards CT spawn or just wrap around that A bomb site. Weber's going to get Molotov'd out just as he tried to make his presence known over towards B. And look at the time, Kana. Again, a very slow round from FM. And the clock is ticking. Mike S gets an entry frag, but they're making their way into B. They are, and that was great because they faked the A push. And now, if FM can get this kill onto Flippin and dodge the CT coming from CT spawn, they will plant. And now they're in a superb position to try and hold off the incoming CTs. Yeah, and this is the thing. This is what I said. When it works for them, when they get these late pushes and they get the entry frags, it works for them. When they don't get those entry frags, it does not work for them. They've got too little time to do any damage. But they've been able to get themselves into some great after part positions in time. Well, Sambani, one versus four. Just gonna fall back to ruins. And really here, FM Esports shouldn't really let him get away. And they won't let him get away. I said FM needed their first team round on the board to give him that little boost, give him a bit of momentum. And they've definitely got it here. 13 7. And if existence lose one more, money is gonna be incredibly tight, and they most likely will find themselves on an eco, even though they won three in a, in a row initially. It's just yeah. welcome to the more expensive CT side. If you are just joining us here, welcome to the G2A.com Counter-Strike Challenge. We've certainly got a great game on our hands here. 
And we're only in the first map of the evening. Existence with that 1-0 lead because they did come through the upper bracket section. But if FME Sports even things up here, we will technically be in a best of three format still yet to go. A long way yet, can't I? And I'm certainly enjoying the action that these two teams are putting up against each other. Exactly what you would want in the grand final of a tournament. Three more rounds is all FM need. To tie things up at 1-1. Existence, of course, coming into this grand final through the upper bracket. Hence why they've got a 1-0 lead. And let's see what Kyrie and Co can do. It's an interesting boost here to potentially... Oh, <laughs> they failed the boost It's almost there. as bad as you and me when we play together. We fail that boost constantly, so I'm just glad it's not just us. But anyway, back on board with the game. Kerry will fall to the hands of Sokken. Will. Neil just trying to scout out any CTs hiding in pit. Weber again playing this lurker role, and he will get the headshot onto flipping, and he's going to know now that this B bomb site might potentially be open. But FM, they still have their heart set on A, and Mason goes big oh. with a triple. And uh, down also goes Neil Zinho and Weber now. We've seen him clutch before. He's arguably one of the UK's best players. He's got 20 seconds on the clock to try and retrieve something from this round. Can he do it? Well, he's fired off a bullet, so they're going to know exactly where he is. He's got to try and do something. And once again, Existence do have grenades to work with. A flash grenade comes right at his feet. Will that all peek out? He doesn't even really need to. There's six seconds left on the clock, but Weber will get taken down. Great hold there from Existence. Mason was their saving grace, holding down Quad in style, and despite having that slightly less powerful Famas in hand, he did a significant amount of damage, and he's going to punish the FME Sports side. Look at this, Karnak. They're going to try and even out their economy, but with a couple of players on low cash, it's just going to be Tech Nines. Oh, and two AK-47s. Okay, so they decide to show me wrong. Yeah, they're forcing, forcing it up, they're forcing yeah. it up. Obviously, the fact that it took them so long to uh, force it up, it, it was, they were obviously discussing it. Yeah. It was a big decision from them. But you said it earlier on, Chewie, the, the Tech 9 or the Rec 9, as we call it in the CS community nowadays, is so good and is so cheap that a lot of the time you can use it to take out a CT, then pick up one of their M4s. Yeah, definitely. Well, into round number 22 we go. FME Sports still three rounds away from evening up the series in a 1-1 situation. We've got the mini-map up, so you can have a look. Wall of smoke will prevent Neil Zinio pushing through. Weber once again in his usual spot, just seeing what information he can find lurking and trying to be an annoyance. Over towards Banana has got a smoke grenade in his face as well. And as usual, FME Sports taking things very, very slowly on their T side. So by the looks of things, FME Sports, they know that there's no one playing close quad. They know there's no one playing close arch. The question at hand now is... Are they going to try and wrap round to B? Because, of course, they've got Weber by himself on Banana. Or are they going to try and dedicate towards this A bomb site? Well, they've got to make a decision, and they've got to make it soon. Got those AKs, of course, and let's see whether they can deal the damage with those clash kickoffs. Kyrie with the M4, failing to get a kill through the smoke. Weber's going to be the man to try and flash the CTs on this B bomb site. He's waiting for the call. The communication comes in, and now Sokken to try and deal the damage, and deal the damage he does. He will pick up an M4, flipping spots one. Here's someone coming from behind. It's two versus four. Make that four versus one. And it was a good attempt from Mike F and Co, but they don't know he's sneaking from behind them. Yeah, well, with only two seconds left on the clock, I doubt he's going to be able to do too much more. He has only got that Tech 9, and now Kerry will challenge him after the clock runs oh, out, still obviously. still a good round, though, for FME Sports. Yeah, it still was a good round. two AK-47s. They're going to have to full eco it now. Yeah. But that's the beauty of having a strong half. They've yeah. got breathing space to work with. And one thing, again, is because they managed to drop off a couple of existence players there, that means that they're going to have to rebuy. We all know that the CT side is more expensive, so although they have got a full buy here, and they've got grenades, and they've got defuse kits, and they've got those M4s in hand, their economy as it stands isn't too pretty. I doubt FM are going to be able to take this round, but existence are not going to be wanting to lose too many players there, because then they're just going to have to keep rebuying those armors, those rifles, and everything else that's needed on the CT side. I think one of the most interesting things is how passive both teams have actually played against each other. Yeah. Uh, which is very unlike FM. And uh, obviously, they're trying to adapt to the quality of opposition they're playing up against here. And they're just taking their time here in T spawn. They've only got pistols, in fact, four Glocks and a Tech 9. They've not even bothered buying up nades or armor. They're probably just using this time, they're utilizing this time to just discuss tactics and stuff in spawn. Yeah, well, I saw them do this earlier on again against Kick, and they actually left the bomb in T-spawn and pretty much just ran down mid expecting Kick Esports to take them out in quick fashion, and they did. So they're not deciding to do that here against Team Existence. They're going to try and take some rifles off, but Sokken will get dropped with that Tech 9, and 
with 40 seconds left on the clock, you can tell, yeah, they're definitely just discussing tactics, seeing what they can change up here, because the momentum is slowly starting to switch here, Kai Knight. It was a 12-3 half, and now we're going to find a 13-10 scoreline. I think one thing I'd like to see FM do is go for, for a full throttle gas on the pedal take of the beat bomb side. Because Weber, they've always allowed Weber to push to the top of Banana. Yeah. Push a few men up to the top of Banana. Try and, for example, fake a push, force the Molotovs and defensive smokes out from existence early on in the round, so that once you know they've used up those nades, you still have a good 30, 35 seconds to actually try and execute your push using smokes onto uh, coils, smokes onto the middle of the bomb site like Fountain and smokes to block off CT spawn. Rather than try and do that with only 20 seconds to go because that's yeah. when it becomes really, really fishy. Well, we saw when they changed pace on the CT side and they pushed aggressively down mid with the pistols, it worked and they won quite a convincing eco round. So maybe changing up the pace here would work for FM. We will see what they decide to do though as it looks like in round number 24, they're just going to take it easy. But I'm liking this from existence, actually, because have a look at those two players who are playing towards B. They're getting aggressive on Banana. Yeah, this is the problem, though, because FM don't really have anyone watching behind bar the player at key steps, so they've got to be careful that existence don't get too hungry. And the question at hand here is, should FM Esports decide to fall back to Banana, which looks like they could be doing? Are they actually aware that existence, for the first time, have pushed so far down Banana? He could take them by surprise, this existence player, and this round could end up being a catastrophe for them. Well, Existence have still got three Molotovs to play with here, so they can try and slow things down, oh. but Carey up the top is going to find them. He misses his shots, eventually he's able to take down Mike S, but they're aware of that player up there now. Neil Zeno's going to smoke off Arch. Is he going to peek out? No, he's just seeing if Kerry is still lurking up the top there on quad side, but he's actually backed onto the side. It doesn't matter, though, because he's just creating attention over towards A, because the bomb's going in towards B. flipping has been holding this down well, and he's holding it down again here. Cryptix is going to try and respond, and he will do. Knock down a 12 single points of health. But we're left in a two versus three situation here. Um, this is going to be a really difficult one, I have to say, for the FM squad. Yeah, I think the T here is going to try and get the bomb bomb, but no, he was, he's going to fall down himself. And Neil Zinho now, with only five seconds to go, he's got the bomb. He's going to try and go for the save plan. Surely Kyrie won't let him have it, and he won't. And financially here, it's incredibly tight for FM Esports. And just like that, existence, after going into the second half, 12-3 down, the game is back now almost even Steven. This is one of the things, again, I know I pointed it out a little earlier on, but this is why I said, despite the fact that FM Esports have got such a strong CT side, they've been letting themselves down on the T side. In the overtime, well, in the second overtime earlier on against Kick, they won five rounds on their CT side and then lost three on their T round before they were finally able to take the game out and finish things off. But just because FM Esports had 12 rounds and were four rounds away from taking this map on Inferno doesn't mean their existence were out of it by any chance. FM need to change things up on the, on the T side and they need to do it soon. That Molotov is dealing the damage. We're going to have barbecued Neil at the end of this round. Cryptix gets one, however, picks up an M4, but he is no more. Kyrie comes in and he'll drop the final FM Esports player to 13-12. And now FM, they're going to buy up now. It'll be interesting to see whether they opt to go for an AWP player. But even though Mike S is their normal AWP, we actually saw Mike S AWP a fair bit on the T side of Inferno yep. earlier on in the tournament. But this time round, they've obviously opted not to go for that approach. No, he's not been using it pretty much whatsoever from what I've seen on the T side of Inferno. I mean, there was a time when there was a dropped AWP from Fox from Kick. And they just stared at it and didn't pick it up on their T side because they are I just more comfortable comes down with the AKs. To the quality of opposition. Yeah. Kick and existence, obviously, kick was seeded first. Obviously, they don't want to take that gamble. But up against the lower lower teams, Mike S definitely tried to utilize the AWP. But yeah. talking about utilizing weapons, Weber is very good at doing that, and so are Mike S and Cryptix. It's advantage to FM Esports now. Bomb going down here on this larger A bomb site and flipping a Musambani. Let's see if they can do it. Well, this is what I said, that FM Esports had great success on the quad side of the A bomb site. And look at where they pushed, and look at how they've got the bomb down on the quad side of the FA, um, on the A bomb site. So Flippin and Musambani against the world here to see what damage they can do. Neil Dino is going to push through Boiler and takes down Flippin. Musambani's just got to try and save that M4 now, and that's exactly his plan. He will back away. We can see that those T players are going to try and back away now. Three of them are low, so they've got to try and hold on to those AK-47s. So they exit out of the A bomb site. Musambani looking for any exit frags to see if he can find anybody. Cryptix actually dies there. He was on 3 HP, but he's got to buy that AK-47 once again. Mike Hess has got to buy once again as well. They have got the money for it, 
but Existence have got quite a lot of money in the bank as well. It was a really, really good execution from FM Esports though. And the thing is, the fact that they broke through, they've now found a weakness in this Existence defense. Yeah. They were stood at second mid, they smoked off Pit, and that allowed one person to push through apps and then the rest to push around quad, yeah. and they smoked off Arch as well. And they've been doing and that time and time again. Round number 27 it is, and Karnak, do you think FM can close this one out? Well, I hope so. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> regardless, Bias. Of who, regard, <laughs> regardless of who wins this map, it's been a great map to not just watch, but also cast. But here we go. See, here we go. They're going to try and do the same thing again. They noticed there was a weakness in the pit and quad players, and they're going to try and take advantage of that weakness yet again. If FM are so hungry to get that all-important 15th match point, but the question at hand is, are the Spaniards going to make as many mistakes as they did in the last round? Have they learned from their mistakes? They've got a great dynamic defense going on. Let's see how they're going to change it around. They're playing even more passive this time round. Normally, we see Lowell play quite up close and personal on quad. They've dropped both players back into pit now. Clock is ticking, 40 seconds left, and FM Esports need to make that decision to move soon. We can actually see that we've got one player on the B-bomb site, who's rotated his way through CT spawn, but now he's making his way back towards B, but they're gonna have to rotate once again. Mason in a crucial spot here, he's gonna get spotted out, the team kill comes in, this has not gone well whatsoever for FM. Weber, the last one left alive, he will get shut down in existence with a good hold. You said, would they be able to correct their mistakes from round number 26? They did so, they stopped that push, helped by a team kill as well. An existence now one round away from evening up this game. This time round though, we didn't see the smoke that landed right in front of Truck like we saw not the last round, the round before. True. And that obviously allowed that player who's hiding in the forest truck spot to just get a few easy headshots. And yeah. he was a player who turned around and killed yet another person coming from apps. And of course, the team kill didn't really help FME Sports's case to try and take over that bomb site. But Rec 9's out, Mike S with armor, Socken and Neil Zinho with armor and helmets. And of course, they've got two flashbangs each, so that's four flashbangs all together, and two smoke grenades. So we're probably gonna see just a simple smoke onto coals, smoke onto CT spawn, try and get up close and personal with the CTs, force these Molotovs out first, and see what we can do once we rush into the bomb site. Well, the CTs will have heard those tech knives come down, and they've still got more than enough grenades to try and deal with this attack coming in from FME Sports, but all the same, the clock is ticking once again, and FM are looking to set up for this B bomb site push. Can they do it? They're going to push through straight away, despite a second smoke grenade coming down. They were just waiting for that first one to go as my guest gets one frag. Flipping will respond. He's been holding down B with great success so far. He will get the hat trick here, as now Socken in ruins is the last one left alive. He's only got that Tech 9 to deal damage with. And they know exactly where he is. He will fall in Kyanite from a 12-3 situation in favor of the British. We are all even, 14-14. Well, what we've seen so far is two world-class CT sides here on the Oh, most now. definitely. And obviously, bear in mind, guys, the prize pool is £10,000, uh, 10, which is around $15,000. And I believe first place get around $7,500 and second place get half of that. So there's a big difference between finishing first and second, and if there's anything we know about FM Esports i-Series, they hate finishing second. They always want to be the top team, particularly as far as CSGO is concerned. But here we go, Existence hungry to get match point, and financially it looks tough for FM Esports. They're taking it very slow here at the bottom of Banana, no execution just yet. Neil perhaps the player to try and fake an A-take. But if there's anything we've learned so far, Chewy, is that Existence they're so good at holding that B-bomb site. Most of the time, they just leave flipping in there by yeah, himself, and yeah. he just sprays and prays and kills does three or four incoming players. It's crunch time on Inferno, ladies and gentlemen. Round number 29. We're either going to see a 16-14 scoreline, or we will be going to overtime here on Inferno. And I don't think I've actually casted an Inferno yet this weekend that hasn't been an overtime. <laughs> but it's great to see. I love Inferno. We went 26-23 earlier on for FM Esports on this map, so they've got the potential to take this one still, but they've only picked up two rounds on their T side. That isn't good enough. Weber's going to start things off, though. Down goes Flippin, that man that you pointed out was holding down B so well. Yep, yeah, but Musambani and Kyrie quick to return those frags. FM Esports one man down, but it's quickly even things out. The one-for-one -one trade, but Cryptic's here. He's surely on the phone to a medic. Only five points of health, and Sokken only on 23. A few nades here could do wonders 
for existence, but unfortunately they've not got any. And now FM, they need to stay cool, calm and collected. Try and hold these angles, hold these positions, protect the bomb from being diffused. And down goes Mike S. And the defuse will well and truly occur. And existence, they've got match point. I predicted that Existence would be able to take this entire tournament after their performance that we've been seeing them do online. They look great in the I-54 qualifiers. They've been beating Kick online. They are one of those teams that can just come into these events and do damage. Flipping that player that you pointed out is probably one of the best players in the Spanish scene. And he's one of those players who can just do some great damage when needed. He can pick up a lot of frags. He can pick up the crucial frags. And existence with 12 3 down. Let's not forget, Kana. I know we keep pointing it out, but it's a very important point to make. And existence have had virtually a flawless CT side, only dropping two rounds. 15 14. This is the round it all comes down to. FM lose this one. It will be 2 0 to the Spaniards. FM win this one, and ladies and gents, we'll be going to overtime. And those are two huge frags for existence. FM now, two men to the bad, and it looks like the bomb's heading towards B, but this is still incredibly tough. They're outnumbered, but not if Neil Zeno has his say. Three versus four, this is doable for FM, especially if they push the B bomb site here, where there's only one Spaniard hiding. Four versus three with 50 seconds left on the clock. I think Neil Zeno may have just spotted that player, MP. I'm not too sure. It is Lowell playing his usual spot. Oh, gosh. Very close to having an AK-47 meet him in the skull. And this is just so slow from FME Sports. This isn't quick enough for them. And they have been able to take down flipping, so they will be able to make that entrance. Now, this is looking good here. They've been able to get full control of the B-bomb site. They've also got control of Arch. And suddenly, things have switched in their favor. It's all going to be left up to Carey and Lowell. But could that be an important frag here? It's left on a two versus two. Yeah, that frag there could have made or could potentially made yeah. or broke the round for yeah. FME Sports. But hey, they've got the bomb down now, FME Sports. They've got these angles to hold from. They literally just need to wait for existence to just run into their crosshair. But again, easier said than done as Kyrie and Lowell make their way into this bomb site. Cryptics has been terminated. Kyrie will not be able to stop Weber, oh. but he runs out of ammo. And existence 12 3 down at half time. They're going to win the map 16 14 here on the Inferno. And that will leave things at 2 0 in favor of existence. Make